three and a half weeks uh, out of surgery. She had numerous uh, procedures. She had hind foot, which is the rear foot, as well as forefoot reconstruction. And the front, as we can see right now, an incision right on top of the big toe to correct the uh, bunion deformity, which is nice and straight and aligned properly. When you guys are looking, the skin is kind of inverted. It looks puckered, it looks like a worm to certain people. When you remove the stitches, it flattens out fairly well without a scar. Uh, it's, a, it's a type of suture technique. Some people call it a plastic surgical technique. Those are non-dissolvable on the outside, will be removed today. And uh, it flattens it out fairly, fairly well. You will not see that line in between. So anyway, this is where it is. Now let's concentrate on the back part of the foot. What did she have? She had a an osteotomy of the heel bone, which is a break of the heel bone and insertion of a cadaver bone called an iliac crest. An iliac crest has an outer bone called the cortical and cancellus, which is the inside, which is great for induction uh, of bone osteogenesis. So that's what she has, a little tiny, tiny cut on the outside. It's to prevent transverse plane anomalies and to correct certain anomalies in regards to pronation and uh, further deformation of the foot. As we can see that right there in the back part of the, of the, of the Achilles, we can see three stabs. And those are called a percutaneous, percutaneous Achilles lengthening, described by Hook. And it allows the lengthening of the Achilles properly, so therefore uh, the inclination of the heel bone becomes proper. This one is called an Evans. If you guys want to look them up, Evans Distal Calcaneal, Distal Calcaneal Osteotomy, Evans, E-V-A-N. Okay, we did also a Kidner on the inside. On the inside, she had a Osnivicillary Syndrome, which is a fairly large extra bone that was impeding the attachment of the posterior tibial tendon. The tibial tendon wraps around the bend of the ankle and attaches to the arch. And that was a problem and also a hypertrophied navicular bone, which is a, a bone in the, in the arch that was enlarged. That needed to be shaved down and transposed the tendon. I transposed the tendon with little tiny anchors, two anchors typically, made by Arthrex, which are absorbable anchors, and they have sutures to realign and reattach. So when we look at the foot towards the nose, the second toe is smacked down to the heel. The bisection is perfect for foot to hind foot relationship. The arch is reconstituted. The alignment second toe to shin is where it should be. And upon bringing the foot towards your nose, if you could, it will not go outwards. It will stay where it should be rather than depreciate the arch. When we look at the x-rays before, this was the osnificillary, which is the enlarged bone if I put my finger on it, that bone is an extra bone, fairly, fairly, fairly large. And obviously you can see the enlargement of that bone. So we excise that and we shape that and then transpose the tendon into that bone. Furthermore, we realign this angle as well as these angles back to where it should be. Furthermore, as you guys can see, these bones, the way they're pointing, going outwards, they need to be pointing upwards towards 12 o'clock. And as we can see, the ball is trying to escape out of its socket, needs to be brought back in. So all these angles are described in the foot and ankle surgery uh, textbooks. Nonetheless, she also had the bunion also addressed. So as we can see, this whole structure and now we're gonna show you the after, if we could. And as we look at them um, from this angle, now the bulb is back in the socket, the bone is shaved, the extra bone is removed, the bunion is addressed with a screw and aligned properly, the graft is inserted and fixated with a neutralizer plate, uh, the bone graft that is. Otherwise, everything is very, very in line. So the bone structures are nice and straight as before they were shifted. And the alignment of the Sima line, uh, Kite's angle, which is this and that together as well is nicely reduced. Uh, midfoot to hindfoot 
uh, alignment is, is achieved and the front to back is front of the foot to the back of the foot is, is nice in regards to second metatarsal to the back part of the hind foot. So that's in a nutshell um, a reconstruction of the foot and we'll, we'll uh, post you further in regards to the updates in regards to the patient. Again, three and a half weeks out, stitches will be coming out and uh, typically uh, within 18 to 20 days are removed in my book, especially for these kind of cases uh, due to the aggressive nature of the healing, the bruising, and to prevent complications of, of reopening up the wounds. So anyway, thank you again. Bye-bye.